There you can see me. Uh, <laughs> there you can see me just uh, enjoying that that victory. Okay, guys, welcome to another Title Tuesday, and this time we're going to see two of my games where I played our Pierce defense against the Austrian attack. And here we have the very first game I'm playing a 2600 player, and the second one was actually pretty easy because my opponent walked right into the trick that we covered on lesson number 73, guys. But here you can see me starting with a regular Pierce uh, pawn to g6, and then right after pawn g6, my opponent plays f4. If you remember the table with the theory that I gave you on lesson 73, I like to play guys pawn to c5. And now we get this sort of dragon Sicilian pawn formation. And then, of course, we talked about knight f2 d7. Typically, my opponent takes on d6, but here they did something that is not theory. So here I have to ask myself, how can I take advantage of it? Well, I decided to just castle. If they take on d6, I'm going to take back. And then if the knight takes again, I have queen e7, hitting the king in the center, hitting that knight on d6. So, of course, they're not going to do it. So I decided to just take in the center. And guys, notice that, notice that I'm being left with an isolated pawn, but that pawn is going to be a pretty advanced pawn. It is already in white's territory. So it's different when it is in my territory and they could block it than when it is on d4 because now it is sort of like limiting the white pieces. It's a pretty powerful pawn on, on d4. So at this point, I'm trying to decide how do I continue to be energetic and queen a5 made sense. Now, my opponent, you're going to see, replied with queen d2. Very ugly move. I like their queen on d2, so I'm not going to trade. Instead, I decided to bring my queen to that diagonal, g1 to, to a7. And of course, they're not going to let me do any discovery checks or anything like that, but it makes sense to get out of trouble by creating a threat on their knight. Now, the same thing, I'm being attacked, so I want to move my queen by attacking something else. So I, I don't want to give him time to develop, to castle the king. So I went um, queen c6, and then my opponent still has to solve all of their problems. Not that it's a big deal, but they have to try to at least move their queen out of there. All right, so queen b6, I know I'm moving my queen around a lot, but they're also moving their knight. The queen is still uh, very awkward on d2. And basically, guys, I did it to develop my knight to c6. That's what I'm looking for. Now, knight c5, opening up my bishop. But also, if they let me get that bishop on d3, I'm going to have the pair of bishops. So they did. Now, I'm thinking, if they take with the queen, I do bishop f5 with a tempo, develop with a tempo. They didn't. Well, now I need to make a decision. What do I do with my bishop? What do I do with my knight? Of course, I do not want to put my knight in front of the bishop because I need to be ready to develop. This is already middle game. My bishop doesn't really have a role, so I really don't mind trading it for the knight on f3. So I just went to bishop g4, forget about the pair of bishops, and pay attention to that square that they have on e3. Weak square, um, we both have isolated pawns, so that means the c file, the e file are going to be open, and I want my rooks to be there. So bishop a3, now I was about to take on a3, but I said, you know what? I really want to do rook e3. I like that weak square on e3. So let me go there without the rook getting to f3, even though it was not going to be trouble, but um, why not? And again, guys, what I like about this game is that uh, I was able to, to just play energetically, just putting pressure on my opponent and uh, and I think I think we did a good job at that. You're gonna see after that many mistakes were made, but that's part of the job. Now with my rook on e3, I want to do queen a6, hitting the bishop on a3, but also putting more pressure on the isolated pawn on d3. Weak pawns, we gotta try to put pressure on them. Okay, so 91. Now I I was debating should I bring my other rook, double up on the e file. I really wanted to do um, rook e2. So that's one of the main ideas. Now, h5 also came to mind, and the idea is to do h4, and once that knight leaves, I'm able to do rook e2. So that's what I'm trying to do, right? So h5, 
And now I think my opponent did a move that took me by surprise. Yeah, so I think here they did knight c2. And I had to find a way to deal with that problem. I thought at first, and by the way, guys, this is a good moment for you to pause the video and try to think of what you do if this were your game. I was going to move the rook back, but I figured, let me do h4. If they take me, I could take with the pawn hitting the queen. Now, here, quick sacrifice. Remember my queen being on that diagonal? Well, it came handy. And now bishop d4, I was thinking about it, but I didn't know what to do after they did rook a to e1. So I said, you know what, forget about it. Let me secure the exchange. <laughs> and then, guys, knight d4, I sensed it was going to be a very powerful move. The engine marked it as, as a brilliant move. And I didn't know it was brilliant, but I knew it was powerful. If they take my bishop on g4, I'm ready to do knight f3, double check. And of course, it is also a fork to get their queen. So they couldn't take... My opponent keeps burning time because we continue to be energetic. We continue to put pressure. So not only am I threatened in that, but I want to do knight c2, rook c2. All of those ideas are in the air. Okay, so they got away from trouble. Now bishop e2, I'm just thinking, let me secure my pawn on d3. Now knight d5. Took me by surprise, guys. I was like, okay, my queen is being attacked and they're about to do knight e7 with a fork. So um, I thought of rook c2 and I think the engine didn't like it, but at this point, guys, we're getting low on time. I have to be practical. So queen d4. Now I'm thinking, let me get out of trouble and attack their bishop. Just like we did in the opening, I'm doing the same thing now. I'm being threatened. I want to get away from that with a tempo on one of the pieces. So as you can see now, I'm getting to really low on time and I need to play faster. So there you go, queen a6. And my opponent didn't have many options, so they took the knight, I take the bishop. At least I'm not losing material. I just need to be careful not to get checkmated, guys. So queen and knight, they could be dangerous, but that knight hanging is not gonna really help. Now. Rook g1 was to <laughs> get away from the checkmate threat. Here, I'm looking for that square that is going to keep me safe. And I think I found it. And then my opponent just, in time pressure, just did that move. I missed, guys, queen c1. Horrible mistake. But I knew queen e7 would trap the knight. So we won on time, but I think... And there you can see me... Uh, <laughs> there you can see me just uh, enjoying that, that victory. That was a tough opponent, and we played a decent game. All right, so here we go. This is the second game. My opponent starts with d4. I'm doing g6, and it transposes into a pierce defense, right? They started like a queen's pawn opening. Then e4 is the same thing as doing e4, d4. And after knight c3, this is officially, guys, the Austrian attack. So my opponent did knight f3, and one more time we do pawn to c5. This time, my opponent actually took. Before, they did e5. This time, they actually took. So queen a5. We know that if they took on d6, we had knight takes e4. And now we walk into this line that we know, guys. Typically, they want to do bishop e3 so that they can castle. But they wasted a move there with bishop d2. So we got to do a6. We got to do knight c6. And now queen b4. This is the hidden trick. It's a chip trick, but many people don't see it. So now, if you remember, knight e4, brilliant move. But this is a brilliant move that we knew from before. So <laughs> this was prepared. Now, if they take with the knight, we take on b2, bishop takes b2, and checkmate is in the, air, in the air. If they take with the bishop, like they did in this game, we have bishop takes c3, and then we collect on e4. And guys, from this moment on, you're going to see that it was just about uh, continuing to put pressure, and if they simplify the game, I'm okay with it. I'm up a pawn, they got doubled, isolated, isolated, and here I didn't take the queen because I'll be fixing their pawn structure. So now you're gonna see that it's pretty easy to finish to finish it. Now my opponent is going to try to attack my king, create some complications over there. There's nothing better. So I better continue to be energetic. If I stay quiet and I let them attack my king, they're going to find a way to complicate the game. So bishop e6, just developing. Now 
Now, bishop d5, I'm thinking if they do rook h to f1, I'm going to take the knight, followed by knight e5, fork. So that's what I'm looking for. Of course, bishop c4 was probably more energetic, but... All right, guys, so my queen is being attacked. I, I think I'm forced to do queen c4, which is perfect because, again, I'm already winning. Simplification is going to be good for me. I even have a pass pawn on, on a6. Now, careful with getting opposite color bishops. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't take, uh, I didn't trade knights. And on top of that, I'll, I'll be also fixing their pawn structure, which I don't want to, unless I really have to. Now, I don't remember, I think I did just push the A pawn here. I'm, I'm thinking, what is my advantage? My advantage is a couple pawns. Where are those pawns? Well, the A pawn is a pass pawn. Let me just push it. Now, f6, I said, you know what? Forget about it. Let them take if they want to. I'm going to have my powerful bishop on c4. And again, my pass pawn should dictate the game. Here, they just played fast. They dropped the bishop. The bishop. But guys, from the moment they let us do that trick on them, we won this game. I hope that you found some value on these games. I hope that they helped you reinforce what we covered on Lesson 73. If you're new here, we have an entire playlist on the Pierce defense and all of the different variations, including the Austrian attack. So with that said, I will see you guys on our next lesson.